And JC? Sugar scrub. Sugar scrub. Fixing to work my arm muscle. That's right. So we got, what we got in there so far? 20 pounds of sugar. 20 pounds of sugar. And that's it. And uh, no, no baking soda yet? Nope. All right, we gotta put baking soda in there. And we gotta put four cups of baking soda in there. And uh, when you're purchasing your sugar, guys, I recommend that you go to all the stores in your area and that you find the finest sugar scrub, sugar you can, the finest crystals. Um, because you don't want it to be too abrasive to the skin, but the, also the reason that I do that is I sell this for the face. And, um, and so I, ne I definitely don't want it to be a, a too abrasive for the face. All right, you ready for some for some baking soda to go in? Yep. All right. All right. So there is our baking soda, and that is uh, four cups of baking soda and twenty pounds of sugar, and then we're going to add two cups a bit of that clay to this. You have to stir it because it gets stuck in the corner. Just add my own helpful tips to your video. There you go. And baking soda don't taste good either, so keep your head away. Uh, do you know what bentonite clay does, Jesse? Draws out impurities. Draws out impurities. Just like activated charcoal. Yep. So we got, oh, sorry. So we got, oh, we need face masks so we can breathe. <laughs> it's only bad when we first dump. Oh, okay. And uh, my bag's got a little bit uh, messed up, but uh, I get my, uh, by my Benonite clay from Bulk Apothecary. Um, I think they have the best prices. And so now I she's going to keep blending on this and I'm going to be getting the baking soda, uh, baking soda, the Epsom salts ready. Okay everybody, <clears throat> now we're doing our Epsom salts and on the Epsom salts Uh, we are uh, grinding it to make it finer. You don't want to use a lot at a time, and you've got to have a strong grinder if you're going to do this. makes it finer so that it's better for the skin and we're using um Kim uh-huh uh, we got these ready they're dry at this point. no not yet all right we need um, to get our Epsom salts in there and we're doing 12 cups and that is a bag and a half and I'm putting in a half a bag at a time. I know you saw what I was shaking it before. 
and that's what it prevents and um, It, it moves it around and keeps it from from locking up the motor. Taking so that it can still find it. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. Cause that's uh, what it feels like. Taking so that when you get done. Uh huh. But we are putting. And uh, when you're melting the oils that go in there, don't put the bottom and E. You can put it all in one thing and yeah, okay. And. Uh, There's our last half a bag. And while I'm doing that, I'll let you see how we're blending. All right. And uh, I wanted y'all to see the spices going in. And that's the spices. And I wanted to tell you about the, the yellow dock root. The yellow dot root <coughs> made it very yellow this time. And when it was first used for about four or five days, it would leave a yellow residue on your skin, but then it all, uh, it, it, it balanced out. And after that, it quit doing that. So with this recipe, um, the yellow dot root, we believe, uh, caused, uh, but once it all incorporated, it, 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 it had to sit and incorporate with each other. It aged, but after it aged for about five to seven days, then it, then it didn't do that anymore, and it was ready for sale, and it was the best sugar scrub we've ever made. The best ever, guys. So there's our last, whoop, I bumped my camera. There's our last half a bag of Epsom salts. So now we got 20 pounds of sugar, 12 cups of Epsom salts ground, uh, four cups of baking soda, two cups of Benedict clay, and then on the spices, we've got four tablespoons of thyme, coriander, rosemary, majorium, kelp, Turmeric, slippery elm, and yellow dot root. All right, now uh, you're getting together the oils as, as we speak, aren't you? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, before you put the liquids in, you have to make sure that you get all of the powdered ingredients put together well. Did you put the turmeric in here? Mm -hmm. All right, it just didn't look yellow enough, but I bet when it gets wet, it's going to turn yellow. All right. All right. So you keep working on this and then we'll bring you back when we get our liquid stuff together. Okay, guys. Um, we uh, we got our 
stuff ready and we've made sort of a hole in the middle um, and now we're going to add our oils but let's go over what's in the pot what's in the pot guys we've got 20 pounds of sugar 12 cups of Epsom salts that's been ground to a fine uh, salt or baking soda texture uh, four cups of baking soda and two cups of Benonite clay and then we put in four tablespoons of thyme coriander, uh, rosemary, majorium, kelp, turmeric, slippery elm, and yellow dock root. All of those are ground spices, organic, and we put in four tablespoons each. Uh, now we're going to put in our liquids. We are putting in uh, our uh, uh, three ounces of preservative, and we are putting in uh, one cup of shea butter, uh, one tablespoon vitamin E, one half cup coconut oil, one half cup olive oil, three ounces of honey, and three ounces of glycerin. And we go ahead and start. Start pushing the powder into it. No, uh, because uh, oh, this is not like lotion where it's over, you know, 160 or 70 or 80 degrees and we're not having to cool and I made sure the temperature of the oils was good. I went ahead and put my preservative in here with everything else. We didn't heat the liquid oils. We only heated the, uh, the oils that were, um, we only heated the oils that were, um, what you call it, hard oils. Solids. Yeah, the solid oils. Everything else we did put in there afterwards, which cooled those down, and they were kept below 180 degrees, so they didn't lose their uh, value. And, um, and, and now we are working on getting all of this stuff blended up together, and uh, we are going to add, uh, make me a mountain in the middle again. And this is our essential oils. Uh, here, and I'm going to tell you about those. Now that turmeric made it yellow. Yeah, turmeric essential oil. And this harvest from Essential Depot from the bottle I got is very yellow. And you're not needing to get around the corner first. I'm sure she will. Mm-hmm. So about the only way you can get the big clumps. And uh, depending on your gloves, there is the possibility that if you put your gloves right down in the essential oils, you know, that it might, it, essential oils can be pretty harsh. It'll eat through styrofoam. I don't know how it is on these gloves. So, uh, yeah. After a while, it makes them thin. After like an hour of mixing, uh -huh. it makes the fingertips thin, but it's nothing major. All right. So change your gloves if you need to. And try not to like just put your hands right down in a bunch of wet like we essential are. oils. Well, you, we sort of poured it in there, and then we sort of throw powder on top, and um, and then we uh, uh, started blending, so it wasn't like direct contact with the uh, with the gloves. And you've got lumps in here. You'll mm -hmm. see these lumps, but if you do that to it, you'll see that's a lump of um, that's a lump of oil and essential oil that's got to be blended into the powder. So uh, that's why you'll see them, you know, rubbing the lumps and breaking them apart and stirring. Mm -hmm. uh, we found gloved hands works better than spoons. And uh, it's going a lot quicker with three of us. Yes. Yes. All day. My first day, I stirred all day for eight hours. I stirred sugar scrub. Yeah, we did a double batch too. This is a single, mm -hmm. uh, but we did a yeah, double. Yeah, we did batch. fifty pounds that time. Yeah, forty. Oh, forty yeah. pounds of sugar. That's right. Mm-hmm. Just gotta get the lumps out. Yeah. Went a lot quicker. Me mixing everything as it. I'm gonna turn it on this. 
Yep, I, I, I find doing the little flat scoop from the bottom pulls it up. But we've still got, see these little lump, see those little lumps right there? Those have got to go. Those are actually oils and, and stuff. So we're not quite there, but we are very close. Get a thin spot and rub it on the bottom like that. You can. Yeah, and rubbing your hands together like that with those lumps really helps to break them up. I can feel them with my gloves. Mm -hmm. Go back there and swirl that stuff in. I just have to see. Right there's one. All right, now there's a. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I keep hitting the camera. Swirl it all. Like that. All right, now if you'll take this spoon and do like this, it's got these holes and that that knocks those out. Like this right here. I'm gonna do a grid. Yeah. Okay, you do it like that, and I'll keep smushing it over there for you. Yeah. That's a big one. You grabbed it about the time I was going to. Uh -huh. That was a big one, wasn't it? Yes. See what we're working with. for the moment. We got all this scooped out, so there's none of those little things in there, so we need to check all this stuff. How does it smell, guys? Smells mm -hmm. good. All this is scooped up. Free of the things. There's one. Yeah. So this should be in a clear. Did this? Oh, she just mixed it up. I know. No, no. Oh, I'm saying, I'm saying over here on my side. I'm saying over here on my side. This is good. This cream. All right, now we gotta tell them about this. So now, while y'all are working on that small, I'm gonna tell them what's in the pot again. For those who are like me and have a hard time finding the recipes on uh, on the website, we've got. 20 pounds of sugar, 12 cups of Epsom sauce, 4 cups of baking soda, 2 cups of Benonite clay, 4 tablespoons of the following, thyme, coriander, rosemary, majorium, kelp, turmeric, slippery elm, yellow dark root. Then we have uh, 1 cup of shea butter, 1 tablespoon of vitamin E, 1 half cup of coconut oil, 1 half cup of olive oil. <laughs> Three ounces of honey, three ounces of glycerin. We only heated the, uh, oh, and then the three ounces of preservatives. We only put, um, we only put the uh, the melted, the, like the coconut oil and the shea butter in the microwave. The rest of it was added afterwards, which cooled that down. And when it was below the temperature required for the preservative, we went ahead and put the preservative in with the liquids. All right, so it would all go in at one time. All right, then on the essential oils, we put lemongrass, clove, black cumin, lavender, and turmeric. That is lemongrass, natural skin toner, clove, a natural antifungal. Black cumin is what's used for, for generations as a boo-boo uh, compote or comp component uh, in uh, things that were used to, um, what do they call that, poultices? Poultices, whenever they're mixing up something, they put it on your boo-boo and bandage it up. It's a poultice, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I thought it was a salve. Well, that's yeah. a salve. It's when you put it in oil. 
But they used to grind up herbs and different things, and then they'd put, they'd cake them up on your arm. I and thought it was just like a compound. Yeah, well, anyway, that's fake. So anyway, uh, lavender, most healing essential oil for the skin, and turmeric makes yeah, for a beautiful complexion mm -hmm. and is an anti-inflammatory, which is great for acne. Um, and we put two tablespoons of each one of those essential oils in there. Two tablespoons, guys. All right, now these are our cups for measuring, right? Mm -hmm. And there, we're almost done. There's no more of those little bowls. Yeah, and we got to get some bags. So they're right there. Uh, they're right there and wait. All right. Around. Okay, guys, so what we got here is we got our plastic bags inside of a measuring cups that's bigger so that that holds them upright and then we got that sitting on the scale when you put your bag in there that zeroes it out and then they're putting the sugar scrub in and um, and then uh, Kimberly is supposed to be putting the ties on <laughs> and it's good to get in there real tight and uh, and get your uh, Tie on real snug. And uh, a lot of people ask me why I put my sugar scrub in these plastic bags instead of putting them in fancy jars. Well, for one thing, it's cheaper on the customer if they, if, uh, they don't have to pay for the jar. For the jar. And it's a lot less headache uh, shipping. Uh, because this will smash and fit inside the bags and won't break or get damaged if it's pushed up against a lotion jar bottle or a bar of soap. It molds uh, to whatever else is in the packaging. Some of these bags. I had, I had a good cruise. So you had it going good and then all of a sudden it just went bad on you. You announced it. I'm sorry. And um, I just wasn't sure if you were aware. So anyway, and then I use bread ties. They're right, they're quite cheap to purchase. I try to put all my money inside the product, not on the packaging. And uh, and so we we try to cinch them down and give it a little twist, and then put on our tie. You had it going on with them bags for a second. Yeah, I lost it. This is Alabama Heat. Whew. Welcome to the South, sweetheart. Oh my gosh. 90 degrees here. It's 100 degrees here. For real. Outside? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I didn't know it was that hot. That's what I was telling you. At lunch, my car was registering 99 degrees. That's not counting the heat index, you know? Wow. Yeah, and, and we try to, I don't have, like, we don't make it exactly eight ounces. Uh, we let it fluctuate um, um, a, few, a few points. So, because it's really difficult to get it exactly eight every spicking time. If it was nine, it'd be easy. Yeah. Ah, she said it, it, I know, she said it keeps popping up nine right on the dot. And, uh, but uh, I sell them for eight ounces, but most of the time you'll get a you'll get a touch over. We try we never go over eight point five. We try to be like eight point two or eight point three, something like that.
You was going to get a pound in there? Uh, yeah, I was trying to put a pound in there. I was already at 11. Stuff it in. We've made our sugar scrub, and uh, what was the hardest part? Mixing. The mixing. And you can divide this by three or four, you know, just divide up the amounts and don't make as much. Um, five pounds at a time is probably what I would do at home if I was going to do it. Five pounds at a time? That would be enough mixing for me. But I mean, for these people here, they're making it to... Uh, to sell? To sell. Oh. And uh, oh, they may not want to make the same amount yeah, we make. Yeah, hire help. <laughs> they may want to make uh, smaller batches. But I think this size batch right here is perfect for retail. And last time I doubled it. But um, but this time I did a single. And because uh, we just had a limited amount of time, how much, how long we had till um, when we wanted to get out of here today. I had some lotion that didn't do right. We made... Uh, all three lotions last week and two of them uh, didn't uh, I didn't catch and I'm supposed to sit and let them cool and watch for separation and I was busy and I didn't watch for separation so we put it in the jars and then it separated uh, sometimes emulsifying wax is flexible and you have to you have to always when you actually you put your emulsifying wax in and your essential oils and well not your essential oils but yeah, you, you want to, no, not your essential oils. You want to uh, you want to watch it and see if any oil starts floating to the top and separating out of the creamy whiteness of the lotion. And if you see separation, then you need to put a little bit more. And that recipe had called for like 10 point something of um, emulsifying wax. And so what we did was, is we added another two ounces to it and now it's as pretty as you please over there but we had to scoop it all out of the jars and then we had to melt it real gentle on low for a long time so that we didn't kill uh, nothing that was in there and then i added some more preservative to it because i won't take the risk that my preservative didn't uh, possibly get damaged uh, and then uh, I put the emuls and I also added two more ounces of emulsifying wax, and now my lotions are perfect. I'm gonna show those to you. There they are. See now they're just perfect. Look at that, no separation at all, and. Uh, they look like the essential oils was floating up on the top of them, all wet and runny on top. And that was separation. Didn't get enough emulsifying wax in them. And so we had to uh, redo our, re lick our job. Had to what? Re lick our job. Uh, 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 when I, uh, I, I re lick her jaw. I was like, no, re lick our job. And now this right here is a saying that comes from the country. Uh, when a newborn animal is born, its mama licks it clean. Mm -hmm. And if the mama don't do a good job, you got to go re-lick the job. Ew. It was an old country. It's an old country saying. I heard it from my grandparents. You got to go re-lick that. In other words, you didn't do it right, so you're gonna have to do it again. Got to go re-lick it. I've heard Lordy B, and I've heard of eating crow. <laughs> yeah. Now eating crow. Uh, that's something totally different. <laughs> yeah, well now we, we talk about eating crow, that means like when we was wrong and we had to, to admit it. it and everything. I wonder where that comes from when it comes to crows. Sure. You think it's because crows are always talking and calling and... It might be. Because I'd hate to really have to eat crow. That would yeah, be, sure. It's not an eating bird, I don't Surely. I really you know, I was at... I had to, I'd rather eat possum, armadillo. I was at the waffle house getting me some supper because i don't eat fast food much anymore i like real food and the waffle house they open up real eggs and it's real bacon and and the grits look pretty real to me and uh, the bread is real bread 
And so I'll go and have Waffle House for supper uh, before I'll eat a McDonald's hamburger that's got um, uh, silicone solids in it as a filler. Or meat glue. Or I saw meat. a thing on meat glue that is just awful, I know. So I don't eat fast food at all anymore. Unless I absolutely have to. I am starving. I am with a group of cavers, and that's my only choice. That's a giveaway. That's a, oh, I'll go to my house. It's a giveaway. Put a tie on it. I'm going to put it over here. I'll put, uh, when you get your gloves on, put a tie on it. You'll remember because you're over here. You're over there. Anyway, but I was sitting at the Waffle House, and uh, y'all got to see this story. You got to hear this story. Anyway, let's see. Yeah, okay. So I was at the Waffle House. And, uh, and I was eating. And over on the other side of me, uh, I was at that little, I was by myself, so I was at that little bar. And this, there was a man sitting here talking to a man and his family over in the booth. And they had had a visitor uh, from... Uh, like Korea or one of them type countries and uh, <clears throat> and uh, they they drove by something uh, and and there was a skunk that was dead and uh, the uh, the skunk the smell of the skunk she said we got candy that smells like that and I was over there trying to eat my eggs you know, and he said, and uh, <coughs> she, he said, and it gets worse. He said, then he said, then they, she started telling us about one of their aphrodisiacs, which is a boiled egg, and they let it they let it gestate for twelve days, and then they take eggs and they uh, boil them alive. And, and he was talking about her eating that egg in front of him, breaking it apart and eating it. And uh, uh, I, I don't know, I, I guess they found somebody that was uh, had a hatchery or something and they got some eggs they'd only been going for 12 days for because she was wanting them. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he said he couldn't watch her eat and I was over there trying to eat my bacon and my eggs and I just about lost it. And I just, he finally shut up, or I swear, I was just going to go and pick up my plate and move to the other side of the Waffle House. <laughs> but he was talking about the, the snakes over there. Uh, he had been over there. That's right, he had been over there. So then she was over here visiting here. Or maybe he was talking about a trip over there where he was visiting. And uh, that's what it was. He was he had been over there, and his friend, um, no, because he said they smelled the skunk here, and she said that they had candy that smelled like dead skunk. And she said, once you get past the smell, it was really good. I don't know. I was trying not to listen. I was trying not to listen. All right, so now did y'all get the recipe? I looked at my live sugar scrub video and I didn't do a good job with the recipe. So I told it several times. I might even tell it again. All right. 20 pounds of sugar. Go to all the stores in your city, including Dollar General stores and Family Dollar stores, and, and, and find the best sugar when it comes to the grain, a real low grain sugar. Uh, small grain sugar, fine grain sugar, that's it. Dominoes, oh, it's such chicken eggs. It is big, old, fat grains that scratches your skin and doesn't feel good. So you want to get a fine grain sugar, all right? And then 12 cups of Epsom salts. And on your 12 cups of Epsom salts, uh, you want to... Um, what you said? You want to have... Um, um, you want to pre-grind it if you can. And what that's doing is it's making it finer so that it's uh, very abrasive like sandpaper but not scratchy and painful. Alright. And you can do it in smaller amounts. Like you could, if all you had was like a blender, I mean, uh, what, what is those things? Is that called
on the blender? Uh, what is it where you do mixed drinks in and people do it? It's a blender. Is that a blender? Okay, you can put like a cup at a time in a blender and just do a little bit at a time until you got it done. I, and my big strong one, even I have to work with it to get it to do it. I put a half a, a, half a bag at a time. So anyway, so that was 12 cups of Epsom salt. All right, four cups of baking soda. All right. And then after the four cups of baking soda, then we're going to do two cups of bitternut clay. Two cups of bitternut clay. All right. And then we're using four tablespoons, four tablespoons each of thyme, coriander, rosemary, majorium, kelp, turmeric, slippery elm, and yellow dock root. All right, and then we're using a cup of shea butter and we're melting that and uh, a, uh, a half a cup of coconut oil and we melt that gently. And we do that so that it doesn't get over 180 degrees. And then we're gonna add a tablespoon of vitamin E, a half a cup of olive oil, and three ounces of honey, and three ounces of glycerin. If you don't have shea butter but you got argan oil, those two are pretty uh, interchangeable. They're sister nuts. All right, and then on our essential oils, we've got uh, oh, and, and, that, and three ounces of uh, of um, preservative. All right, and then on our um, essential oils, we got two tablespoons lemongrass, two tablespoons clove, two tablespoons black cumin, uh, two tablespoons lavender, and two tablespoons turmeric. All right, and uh, this right here. Uh, is the uh, preservative that I use and I can't tell if the lights get on that let me look yeah there we go all right now I get it from the sage.com I use optifin preservative because it does it's formaldehyde free and uh, <clears throat> and paraben free all right all right so last one and uh, we got this thing under control. Uh, I'm gonna show you the mound of them in just a second. Okay, so we got the recorder on. Now we're putting our labels on the sugar scrub. And so what we're doing is, is we've got our, our stickers and uh, they peel off and there's 10 up the rows. And this one here got a little bit stained so I thought I'd just use it as an example one. Uh, and we get these from Planet Labels, and it's the one by four, one inch by four inch labels. And they're not expensive. They're like $20 for um, a, a hundred sheets, and there's 20 per sheet, so it's 20 times a hundred. That's how many stickers you're getting. Uh, huh? 2,000 labels for like 20 bucks or less, if I remember right. And so then what we do is, is we take the, the bags and we fold them out like this and making a hole in the back with our fingers and that gives us a flat surface to put the label on and then uh, the label goes on quite well. And uh, sometimes you'll have a little bad place in them but rarely. And as you can see, they went on quite well. So it says essential soap natural sugar scrub and it has just the ingredients on it and uh, the um, oh the address and all that stuff. So so anyway, so uh, you're not gonna tell how much we sell it for. Uh, yeah, we sell these for three dollars a bag. Is it four? Well, it's either three or four dollars a bag. <laughs> Kim charges three, I charge four. <laughs> There you go. Maybe it's four dollars a bag. <laughs> I'm not sure either. <laughs> Say, nobody knows now, do they, Jesse? Nope. We're gonna have to go look on the sign out there. <laughs> have to look on the website and see what we sell it for. But you know, because I put it in these plastic bags and I put these cheap labels on it and I use black ink, I can sell it to people very reasonably. And I like uh, being able to sell uh, stuff to people at a very regardless, reasonable. Regardless, three or four dollars, it lasts forever. A bag does. Yeah. Well, I use it. I use it every day. Do you? Yes, I use it every day on my face. I try to skip just one day a week uh, because of my rosacea. Well, yeah. I, I have to. I, 
it keeps my it keeps my pores clean and uh, it's the only thing that helps me I'm allergic to caves people uh, yeah I'm allergic to caves that's what I've decided uh, <laughs> that I, I, I pulled that one out and messed with it so it wasn't part of your 20 um, but uh, I, I um, I have, uh, I, I started breaking out on my face when I started going into the caves more often. And I think it's the ecosystem, the moles and bacteria and things that lives in the cave that my rosacea doesn't like it. And so I'm gonna have to try to start cleansing my face real good before I go in and maybe put some body butter on and then try not to touch my face and then cleansing my face as soon as I come out. Ugh. Because I break out in a rash, uh, and I can't seem to get it clear up, and it's like I go cave and it get worse. So that's why I think that's what it is, because I'm allergic to cave ecosystem, ecosystem, ecosystem. Or just mold. Well, yeah, but it, I ain't le I've never been allergic to any kind of mold before, so it's got to be the mold that's in caves. And when I first started caving, I actually started having some sinus issues, and, and I've never had sinus issues in my life, uh, you know, like on a daily basis, sinus issues. Uh, yeah. Um, I, uh, now, when I, the, as soon as I get in the cave, my nose stops up. And I'm all in there, like, breathing through my mouth, you know, because your hands get muddy, and, and so you can't wipe your nose, or, you know, you can't keep clean tissues, you know, in yeah. your pocket when you're in a cave. So I do keep a Ziploc bag with tissues, and every so often when we stop, I try to clear my nose, but it's really a pain to be allergic to, um, Your extracurricular. To, to my fun. I'm allergic to my fun. I don't like it. Anyway. Hey, guys. So anyway, so that's how, that's how we get her done, right? Get her done. That's how, that's how it's made. We need to be on that show. That's it. We need to Micro, do it. where are you at? I know. And the real micro, not my old customer, Don O'Brien. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. And, case yeah. You well, now, you used to be a bartender and a waitress at a restaurant, so that's the kind of customer that you used to have. Yeah. And, uh, and his name was Mike Rowe. He's such a sweet gentleman. Well, that's the name I gave him was Mike Rowe. <laughs> I, 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 well, we, maybe we shouldn't ask why you gave him the nickname. Because he looked just like Mike Rowe to me. And oh, I could I remember, see. you know, I didn't know everybody's name when I first started, so I was like, guy in the green shirt. And he came in looked like Mike Rowe, and I didn't know his name, so I wrote Mike Rowe. Ah! And he was just Mike Rowe. And then when I quit, I went down there, and he's like, nobody calls me Mike Rowe. You're going to have to get on to him. Aww. So, he was really sweet, though. All right, so our sugar scrub is done. Say bye to YouTube, Jesse. Bye, YouTube.